Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here and today it's all about lunchtime because you'll be facing off as a contestant in the Intergalactic Cooking Competition Show. You'll be collecting and combining flavor cards to create perfect prize winning outlandish dishes and you'll be earning points by serving those dishes to discerning alien judges. Space Battle Lunchtime is for 2 to 5 players, takes 30 minutes to play, for ages 10 and up, and published by Renegade Game Studios. Now today, we'll be doing a rule school where I'll teach you how to set up and play the game so that you don't have to read the rule book yourself. Now I've placed timestamps below me in the description of this video just in case you want to jump to a specific section of the rules. Without further ado, let's get started. Space Battle Lunchtime is a set collection card game for 2-5 to five players where you're collecting different flavors like spicy and savory or bitter and you're turning those in to serve dishes like Coral Crunch trying to match up the different flavors and quantities. The more accurate you are, the more points you'll get by serving better dishes like gold or taking shortcuts with your ingredients making it only a silver dish worth less points or taking even further shortcuts making it a bronze dish. You'll also be enacting special abilities from judges that preside over the dishes that you serve. And if you serve dishes that your chef is the best at, you'll be able to in future turns enact judge abilities. And to gain ingredients, you'll either be stealing a single card from the lotter, or you'll be able to buy cards by trading a card in and getting a certain amount of cards. And it's a race to be the first to get 21 or more points. To set up, you're first going to find all five chef cards that look like this. This is the back of them. You'll shuffle these up and you'll deal one to each player. Any of these being not used because you're not playing with the total five player count can be placed back in the box so you don't need them. Each player will place their chef card face up in front of themselves like this. This will give you a special ability that we'll go over later. Each player will also get one of these spatula tokens. These are double sided and you'll want to place it on this blue spatula side face up. Next, you're going to find the flavor card deck as you see here. In this deck, you're going to find five cards that have the chef blue icon on the bottom left hand side of that. You're going to take these 10 cards out. You're going to shuffle these cards and you'll deal two of those cards to each player. Now these cards are secret, meaning the player who gets these cards can look at them. They will make up their hand, but they don't want to show them to their opponents. If you're playing with less than five players, you'll have some of those flavor cards with the chef icons on them left over. You'll take those that aren't passed out and you'll shuffle them back into the main flavor card deck. Then in the middle of the table, you're going to create what's called the larder. And this is going to be the different flavor cards. So you have the deck that you just shuffled and you're going to place the first four cards face up like this. You'll place this deck here. This will be a draw deck and you'll leave this space open. This is where discarded cards are going to go from the flavor card deck. Next, you're going to locate the six judge cards that look like this. From those six judge cards, you'll notice that three of them have one star and three of them have two stars. For your first game, we recommend only playing with the three one star judges, placing these ones back in the box. However, if you're inexperienced at the game, you can choose to use the two star ones instead. Then in the middle of the table, you'll place those three judges out in any order like this. Next, you'll find the dish card deck, which looks like this, and you'll shuffle it up. You'll then flip the top four cards from that dish card deck, and you'll place them just below the three judges in this way, meaning that each of these judges will be presiding over two different dishes. So it will look just like this. You'll place the rest of the dish card deck right here as a draw pile, and you'll leave a spot here for the discard pile for the dish deck. The player who's most recently cooked a meal for someone else is the start player and takes this start token. Space Battle Lunchtime is a race to 21 points, so you're trying to be the first player to get to 21 or more points, and you'll be doing that by using different ingredients to serve different dishes and getting points depending on how well you were able to do. The game is played over multiple rounds. Each round, each player will take a turn in clockwise order, and on your turn, you're going to be doing one of these three actions shown on this player aid, which you can give to each player if they like. Now, one action you can possibly take is to steal. Now, to steal, you can just take one of the four face-up cards in the lotter, or you could take the face-down card off the top of the flavor card deck without knowing what it is before you take it. So simply steal, let's say you just steal this card, you just add it to your hand. Now you don't immediately replace this, we'll show you why a little bit later, but different abilities might trigger during your turn. So you would keep it like that for now. 
However, instead of stealing a flavor card, you can buy flavor cards. How you do this is you take a card from your hand and you place it in the discard pile right here. And you look at the number here. This says two sour because it shows you two sours here and it says so. You discard that and because you discarded two sour, you can take any two cards. So let's say you could take like this one and this one. Now that's great because you just threw away two and you're gaining cards that actually add up to a total of five. Now remember, you're only taking one action on your turn. So instead of stealing from the larder or buying cards, you can serve a dish. Now to do that, the four dishes that are available to be served are here. And what you can do is if you have the right amount of cards and ingredients, you can serve that dish. So let's say we had this in our hand. This chicken-ish needs a, uh, you know, one blue, two purple, and two greens which essentially are different flavors. As you can see on the player aid card, uh, we have one blue, which is bitter, two purple, which is savory, and uh, greens, which are sour. So if we were able to have these cards, we could then put them into the discard pile in the larder area. But first notice that we have the exact amount of the right ingredients. Now this one is or, this could have been a sweet or savory. So it's one of those, two of those, and two of those. So we have the perfect amount of uh, both flavors of quantity and types. Now we'll place that in front of us with the gold side showing because it was a perfectly gold served dish and it's gonna give us the most points, five. And you'll take your chef card and you'll place it right on top like that so you can see the points. Now, when you serve a gold dish, you get to enact the ability of one of the presiding judges. In this case, since it was here, either one of these two presiding judges, we can activate that ability. So we could either serve another dish or we could steal from the larder. However, if the card that we served was the one on the edge, we would need to use this ability because it's the only one that was being presided by a judge because it's the only card above it. But in this case, let's just assume it was here as it was, and we want to use this judge's ability. We want to serve another dish. Let's say we wanted to serve this stabilized ion pie. And let's say we still, in addition to the ones that we already spent, we had these three cards in our hand. Now, keep in mind, uh, we needed some bitter, we needed some savory, and we needed some sweet. So here we have bitter. Now we have two, this only needs one. We have sweet, we have three, it only needed one. And we have savory, two, and it only needed one. Now, if you're able to use all of the correct ingredients, but the quantities are not perfect, you're able to serve the dish, but it is going to be silver. Now the cards that you used as those ingredients would go to the discard pile next to the flavor card deck. And you'd place it on the silver side since it was a silver dish that we served. And now we have a total of eight points. Now do not refill any of these cards yet. As I just showed, that sort of triggered together where we are able to serve two dishes in that turn. So don't refill these yet because let's talk about some chef abilities. Our chef has sweetness. When you serve a sweet dish, uh, you get to flip your spatula token to the bonus side because the dish that we just served has sweetness into it. Now, what this means is that on a future turn, you'll be able to use this. And when you use your bonus token, notice it has this symbol, which matches the symbol on the judge cards. You can, again, on a future turn, flip it back over to enact any of the judge's abilities. But you can't do it on the same turn that you were able to flip it. Also, let's assume it's a future turn and I'm going to use this and flip it. I cannot then flip it again this turn. Meaning if I flipped it to use a judge's ability and then that turn I actually served a sweet dish, I could not flip it again this turn. You can only flip it on one turn and use it on the next turn. Meaning you can never flip and use your token on the same turn in any order. Now we've shown you how to serve a gold dish and a silver dish. Let's show you how to serve a bronze dish. How you do that is you have the exact quantity any flavors. So here we need one of each of these, so it's a total of three in quantity. Let's say I have this card. It doesn't even match any of these flavors, but that's okay, because we have three and the quantity matches the quantity here, so we're able to serve that. Again, this would get discarded, and this would come towards us on, in the bronze side. Now just to summarize on your turn, you can do one of three things. You're either stealing a single flavor card, you're buying flavor cards, or you're serving a dish. After all of your turn is over, you then will make sure you discard down to seven flavor cards in your hand. And at that point, you would refill cards. Here is a dish because we served a dish this turn. Now, if you ever run out of the dish deck, you shuffle the discard pile to create a new deck. Likewise, instead, if we had 
bought flavor cards this turn, we would then at this point, at the end of our turn, refill the empty slots just like this. And if this card deck ever runs out, shuffle the discard pile and create a new deck. Then the turn will move to the next player clockwise. On the back of your player aid, it actually talks about the different types of dishes that you can serve as a reminder and the flavor names. Players will continue taking turns in clockwise order until one player scores 21 or more points. You'll then finish that round, meaning the player sitting just to the right of the player with the start token will take their last turn of the game. At that point, whoever has the most points is the winner. If it's tied, then you add up all of the individual flavors in their hand. In this case, this player has five. Whoever has the most is the winner from the tied players. And if it's still tied, well, you race to the kitchen to cook something nice for everyone. Well, I hope this helped you dive right into space battle lunchtime and get to the fun quicker than you normally would if you had to read the rulebook yourself. Now, if you have further questions about the rules, I've placed the link below me in the description of this video, and that's the best place to ask them, because not only will I be notified, but so will Renegade Game Studios.